Hey guys, Colby from MufflerTech and StolenCats.com again. Today's video is going to be yet uh, on another stolen catalytic converter topic, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take you on a journey around what it takes to get uh, an SULEV Honda Accord smogged using a provisional aftermarket part that is kind of a, an allowance of, of recent time that uh, they are letting us use as a substitute for the factory part because of the lack of availability from Honda on the, the uh, stock catalytic converter. So as usual, we have a shop full of uh, Priuses, um, still, uh, still a main target for catalytic converter theft. You can see them all here, but uh, Accords are still, uh, still right in that same realm. You can see that white one there. What we're going to be using in the video um, is this wonderful 2005 uh, EXL Honda Accord 2.4 liter four cylinder. It is a uh, an SULEV rated vehicle. Um, as you've seen in some of my other videos, I'll show you really quickly how to determine that pretty easily. Uh, is that PZEV sticker here in the quarter window? Um, the other way to determine it is uh, as I've shown you, uh, which I'll um, by the way attach. Uh, uh, some links to my other cord videos down below if you haven't watched my channel um, but um, just show you really quickly uh, another another telltale sign SULEV and then uh, if we look closely here at the emissions label you can see um, right here let me hold the camera here real focus sorry for the for the jiggle um, where it says SULEV right there just above my fingernail so um, this is a vehicle that uh, for all intents and purposes in order to be legal in California would require a factory catalytic converter, but because the parts are on national back order for more than two weeks, as this, at least at the time that I'm making this video, we are allowed to use an aftermarket part. And there's a, a list of different part numbers. This is the one we're using now. It is from a company called AP, uh, and this is the part number 770134. Uh, this is actually a ULEV rated part uh, and would not be legal as, uh, as a replacement on this car in normal circumstances, but uh, with, uh, with the CARB's new rule around the uh, back-ordered parts, uh, they are allowing us to use this as a substitute. And I'm going to talk to you about what that means and the extra work that's involved as the owner of the car to, uh, to make this part work as a replacement. So many of you that are watching um, have probably experienced this in, uh, in your 03 to uh, 07 Honda Accord. You get in the vehicle, let's get a, go ahead and start it up. You're ready to go to work. And, uh, it's still pretty loud, but, but hopefully you can hear me. But yeah, obviously, the uh, car's a lot louder than it should be, and uh, somebody has stolen the converter. All right, so we're gonna walk underneath it. You guys have seen this if you've watched my channel before, so it's gonna be some kind of repetitive stuff, but this is where they cut it, right here. You see, they, they actually use a pipe cutter in this situation here. And then uh, we already have the, uh, the new A-pipe on, but they unbolt it from up there, take those bolts out. And then you can see that bung right there, that's what accepts this sensor right there, which is your air fuel ratio sensor. We're having to replace that. Um, this comes back, and of course we have the flange for the new cap. The sensors we use are from Denso. Now Denso makes OE parts, so these are high quality. Um, this is going to be the, uh, the downstream part number, 2344797. And the air fuel ratio sensor in Denso. There's your part number there, 2349040. Alright, so here's the finished product. Uh, you can see there's our, our piece of pipe that comes out of the cap, attaches the factory exhaust, which goes out back to the muffler up back to the car. And there's our magic part there. Uh, 770134. Uh, install it so that if you're looking under the car as the technician, the smog technician, they're going to be able to read it this way. There's the downstream sensor. Now we went ahead and welded directly to that downpipe. There's no need to buy an extra flange and worry about gaskets. The aftermarket part's a universal fit, weld in. And then there's the A-pipe with the sensor installed. Car is now repaired. So 
you got the repair done. Uh, now it's time to call the state referee, make an appointment, and uh, get in there and see them about having the vehicle certified for the, uh, well, for all intents and purposes, the incorrect part, um, as it won't, uh, won't work if you pull it up off the California list. But uh, uh, I'm going to make that phone call right here live on the video, and um, you, can, uh, you can see... Um, um, what I say and, and what we talk about and um, again this is just to take you on the whole journey of, of what this looks like to uh, to exercise the uh, the aftermarket part option now the phone number that you need to call um, just so we have it in the video is um, is, is for the state referee um, and uh, as you can see on my screen here it is 1-800-622-7733 I'll Make sure I put that right here in the bottom of the video so you have it handy. Uh, and uh, here we go. Thank you for calling the Buffalo Scheduling Center. To continue in English, please press 1. Thank you. So. Your estimated wait time is 10 minutes. Well, in the interest of time, I'm uh, I'm going to use YouTube magic and make a cut here. Hi, Sylvia. Uh, my name's Colby. I have a 2005 Honda Accord that I just purchased. Uh, it had a missing converter, and I have exercised the aftermarket part option on it, and I need to see about scheduling an appointment to have that certified. What's the license plate number? Five P like Papa, P like Papa, T like Tango, nine one two. Okay, so my understanding is that you replaced the catalytic converter with an aftermarket, correct? That's correct. Okay, so normally what the rest would want is that you have it tested, and it's going to automatically fail on the visual part because it meets the emissions label on it. And then uh, you would uh, hold on to that report and give us a call. And then we would start the way the process is working here since COVID is you have to be pre-approved by phone first. So the rest will call you and just really want to verify the part number you put in. Um, and if they find that that was compliant, then they will authorize uh, an inspection. And then they do a full test at no cost to you. And then, of course, the visual test. It's what they need to also pass, and then they put the proper California emissions label on your catalytic converter, and then they certify you. Yeah, so so that's what I had understood. Uh, I'm not calling you in the blind here. In fact, the only reason I even exercise this as an option is because I had spoken to a referee about this working as a replacement. Now, uh, it sounds like you're giving different information, however, than what I understood. Uh, I thought it changed. I thought I didn't need to get a failure out of smog station before I was able to get this part certified. Normally, normally we, we had it. If you, had, if, you, uh, if you were in contact with us needing some uh, the information on the part and there's records that we have been in contact with you, at that point, then the ref would just uh, verify that. I can send a request if you'd like and skip the test and let them know that you did put that part in and you want to verify it. I'd love to get some details to submit a technical inquiry and they can approve it that way. Um, and then at that point, they would just approve you getting the label. So they wouldn't do a small test at no cost to you. They would just put the California uh, Bureau of Automotive Repair Emissions label on your uh, catalytic converter, and then you would go to a star station. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm interested in exercising. So if you could help me with that, that'd, right, be, okay. that'd be great. Okay, sure. And are you able to provide me with the part information? Sure. What would you like to know? Converter? Okay. The part number is a seven 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 zero one three four. Seven seven zero one three four. Um, and all right, Colby. So how it's going to work here? Of course, we are still working under challenges and delays due to COVID, and of course, a higher number of catalytic converter thefts that started occurring last year. Sure. The response time from the rent here has had to double. Um, I have to give you a window of either seven to ten business days that the ref will call, or it could be sooner. But I do alert you, the ref calls on a restricted number. That's why we prefer your mobile. That's fine. Um, 
so you're available. Yeah, so when you don't see any caller on the within the next seven to ten business days, we need you to respond because one of those calls is going to be dispersed. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Okay. All right. I'll get your request out. Good luck. Thanks very much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. So clearly, uh, we're going to have to have some patience with this process, which is not unexpected um, during COVID times and any time you involve the government. But uh, at least they're trying. At least they're trying to help us. So uh, stand by. Again, with YouTube magic, you guys aren't going to have to wait all this time through the video. But you will if you try to do this process yourself. Eight days later, I got a call from a, a state referee named Irvin, very nice guy. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to record the conversation, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, he confirmed everything that um, we kind of know up to this point uh, and told me that he put me in the system um, with the ability to go in and, and have um, the state referee check the car, make sure that the, the part that we use, the 770134, uh, is, uh, is accurate and works for this vehicle as a provisional replacement. He gave me a query number, and now uh, I need to call the same 1-800 number, uh, let the person know that answers the phone, what my query number is, my name, and uh, they will schedule me an appointment to take the car to them uh, and label it uh, for that particular part. So next part of the video coming up. All right, here we go. So we're going to call 1-800-622-7733 and uh, go ahead and hopefully get an appointment to get this car uh, finalized and labeled. We're exchanging a higher than average call volume. Your have your title and form registration ready so that when they do get on the phone you have all the, the proper documents yeah so uh my name is colby i have a query number that um one of your refs gave me and i was hoping i could make an appointment Yes, that's 8258. 8258? Okay, let me see if we can pull that up and it shows from there that he asked you to schedule an appointment. Yes, please, I'd like to schedule an appointment with the referee. Yes, so you were approved for an appointment to install on Twitter Vehicle and from there they did approve you for a legal appointment. That's what I'm after. The call center to set that appointment would be to verify which part you installed into the vehicle so we can see to make sure you installed the acceptable part the referee size for you to install. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that was what I did with the ref, and that's why he gave me a query number. Yeah, correct. But what we need to do at call center level is we need to make sure that the motorist took that information and installed the correct part. Okay, so yes, the part number that I put on is a for them, please? Uh, that's an email to you, um, so that will be provided in the email. Okay. If you want to check your email, make sure you receive the email. We're going to do that right now. 
No problem. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. So that was um, 28 minutes later that uh, somebody got back on the phone and helped me get that appointment done. So the, the main thing I want to, con to convey to, to my viewers is that um, there's some commitment here in time to make something like this work. Um, obviously, your wait times may be very different than mine, maybe shorter, maybe longer, but uh, be prepared to spend some time on the phone to uh, go through this process. All right, guys, well, today's the day. I'm headed off to my appointment uh, in my maroon Honda Accord here behind us to, uh, to get this catalytic converter labeled at the state referee station. We'll see how this goes. close to uh, 1701 Del Paso Boulevard. There it is right here. And uh, kind of what you'd expect from a government building, not marked very well. Look over there on the sign on top of that tin structure, it says referee on it. And here is the label that you ultimately will receive from the state referee through the Bureau of Automotive Repair. Um, in this case, you can see it has all the information on here. This is the car, uh, has the engine size. Obviously it's fuel injection, has the different, uh, different stuff that's in here for smog. Uh, and then uh, here is the engine family number. And then ultimately the, the part here, the 770134 with its um, exec executive order number there. And then they do a, a VIN tag that shows it matches this particular vehicle. That way somebody can't take this label and put it on a different car and uh, have it work for that particular car. It only it works for this car. So now with this on it, um, the uh, regrettably they wouldn't let me film the, uh, the process with the, uh, with the referee, but um, they had put it in that backdoor jam there I asked them why they didn't put it in the front jam, and they said there's just too much stuff in here, uh, and it would be too crowded. Um, so really important to make sure that uh, you let the smog tech that's smogging it know where the uh, ref puts the tag. Okay, so since now I've been to Bar and I've had the car labeled, I've made it over to Smog and Go, which is an excellent place in Sacramento to have your car smog. Uh, they are graciously going to let me record this smog process with the with the relabel and the and the substitute cat. And so here we go. This is how it's going to work. Okay, here we go. We're in this modernist 2005 Honda Accord. Um, All right, so he's going over to scan the uh, the VIN label right now. That tells the state computer what car he's doing the smog test on. Putting in the license plate. Twice. California plates. That is correct. It's not a business or a fleet vehicle. The test group is... So he's checking the test group, which is on the label. ECV. Like I've showed you guys in the past, he's looking at the engine family number. He has to put that in, or test group number, same and thing. That's right there. Yep. Okay. Mileage is okay. 220.021. Now he's entering the mileage. So everything lines up. Yeah, and then you can see it still says bar referee right there. Yep. So we're gonna check the mill light. See if that it works. So what he's talking about with the mill light is is verifying that and the check actually, engine light actually lights up. And it's right there. And you can see it right there on the dash. So the reason they need to do that is because if that light's burned out they have to fail the car because otherwise they wouldn't know if the light were on or off. Most importantly, it goes off. So it came on. So now it's gonna ask me, did the mill illuminate? Yes. Did the mill illuminate? Yes. Is the mill off? Yes. So, so yeah, he has again. to keystroke in and verify that light is operational. And guys, you can see where they're communicating with the vehicle here. So it's right near through that OBD2 port. Same same area you would scan for any sort of fault codes or anything like that. But you see that cable runs all the way around here. So it goes up into that state computer that he's having to use here. This is on a Honda Ford Visual. Right here, the PCV comes here to here. That's good. 
This is the other breather that we need to look at. That's good. I'm looking at the intake tube and it's all it's all intact, it's not cracked. Usually you get cracks on these. Um, the EVAP purge that comes from the fuel line is right here. It comes into the into your purge solenoid valve, which is right there. That tube is intact. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the catalytic converter. So you have to do this on every vehicle, even vehicles yes. that are not bar labeled, correct? Exactly. D798-10. So that's the executive order number, which is what's important to the smog technician. There's uh, D798-10. The, the part number is 770134. And the date is 5 of 20. There's an H. Now you're also making sure that the O2 sensor's in its proper location yep. and the stuff's not modified as far as... So the back O2 stuff. sensor, they usually like to put spacers on them. That one's there. I'm going to go underneath here and look at the front O2 sensor. Yeah, it's going to be in the A pipe, which we have to replace when they get stolen because they steal the A pipe. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, you and can it's see brand it. new. Well, we just put it in. <laughs> yeah. So, I bought this car with a steel cap. So. Yeah. So the other thing to check is the evap canister. That's in the back. It's by the fuel tank. Oh, you actually do that underneath, huh? I didn't yeah. know that. You got canister stores the vapors from the fuel tank, and it's right here. You just have to make sure it's there, and you see and, uh, no that, broken tubes or anything, right? No broken tubes. Got to be structurally there. I'm gonna take out the fuel cap. I'm gonna look at the seal. The seal is fine. Now, this label, since it's a bar label, it's probably gonna give me that cat number. D798-10, 770-134. So that's the, um, the cat that, that's on the bottom of the car. And everything else, PCV, EVAP, EGR, O2, cat, spark, and nil, I've checked all those. The last thing to check is just this catalytic converter. So this um, kind of goes in conjunction with you checking the vehicle's factory emissions label, right? Exactly. Now, I could look this up on the uh, right here. The ARV website. Sure. Now, you are you going to look at it on the actual aftermarket I catalytic could, converter list, yeah, or do you do yeah, it by executive yeah. order number? Well, I do it by. I, I go to the. Um, yeah. So this is what we use at the shop as well. Yeah. Now. I don't really have to look it up because there's a bar label on the car door that says it's good. Right, exactly. So, and even if you do look it up, it's not going to line up with the engine family for this car anyway. Yeah, it's not going to line right. up. So. But that's what that bar label solves, is it tells you you don't exactly. have to look at that list anymore. Yeah, so what he's talking about right now is what's called a snap throttle test. And what they're looking for is to make sure that the vehicle isn't throwing smoke, visible smoke, out of the tailpipe. These vehicles are no longer tested on a dyno run, so they're not actually sniffing the exhaust. So part of the visual is to make sure that it's not smoking. That's what, one more. So you're allowed, you're allowed smoke on the first one, and the second test, the second step, if it's clear. Right, so that was okay, right? That was okay. Yeah, because when it idles for a long time, it can build up a little bit of oil and get past the valve guides or whatever, right? 
but I would. Yeah, I did have some smoke. Yeah. So I'm gonna pass it for smoke. For smoke, um, there was no smoke coming out of the crankcase. Liquid fuel check. There's no fuel leaking. So all of these crankcase emission control pass, evap pass, catalytic converter pass because it's on the it matches the bar label. Sure, sure. EGR pass, no turbocharger, fuel metering pass, no air injection, computer sensors, wires and switches, good, vacuum lines good, other emission pass. Continue. Does it have an executive order number? Very important. Yes. D seven nine eight. Dash 10, which is that catalytic converter. Right, so this is the part, guys, where you have to make sure you end up with the right part, regardless if it's a provisional part like what we're doing on the Accord, or if you're just having a shop put an aftermarket part on. Exactly. Make they sure you end up with a shop that understands how to vet the part properly, because the smog technician's gonna type in that executive order number, and if it doesn't match, you're gonna fail. Vehicle passed. I'm gonna order a print certificate. One for the shop, one for the customer. That's okay. great, man. I appreciate it. That was a great, good, good way to people to see what was happening with that. So. All right, well, check it out. So vehicle overall test result pass. We're in good shape. Thank you very much to my friends at Smog and Go. It was very gracious of them to let me video that and share that information with you guys so you can see what it takes to get a car through Smog with the provisional part that's been bar labeled. All right, so in closing, I want to make sure that I mention that using this part is being allowed by the state of California as a temporary solution until the factory parts become uh, more available or come off back order. And as a professional organization, if you have insurance that will cover uh, theft on, a, on your catalytic converter, specifically for an SUE, SULEV Honda Accord, like all these ones behind me here, all waiting for insurance approval, um, we specifically recommend that you go ahead and do the factory part. The reason that I say that is uh, we are putting a part on that uh, California is allowing, but the manufacturer of the part from Magnaflow, also AP, uh, none of those companies designed the parts that we're using uh, as this provisional replacement to function uh, and correct the emissions on an SULEV vehicle. So ultimately, uh, you may not have a warranty on that part from that company because it wasn't designed for these applications. And uh, being that we are dealing with um, the government and, and an allowance at this point, uh, we are a little nervous about the longevity and the legality of this part. It's a great solution if you're paying for yourself and need to fix your car right away. But if it's an insurance claim and it's not an out-of-pocket expense, you just have a deductible that you're looking at, we go ahead and recommend that you do the factory part. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Please stay tuned. We are always going to be updating this channel with more stolen catalytic converter information. And uh, appreciate you watching. Like and subscribe. Have a great day.